Joshua chapter 2 from verse 1, I read. I'm just using the English Standard Version this morning. And Joshua the son of Nom sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and lodged there. And if you have your Bible, I want you to underline that, that, that particular verse 1. And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who entered your house, they have, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, True, the men came to me, but I did not know where they we are from. And when the gates were about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with a stalk of flax that she had laid in order on the roof. And so the men pursued after them on the way to Jordan, as far as the ford. And the gate was shut as soon as the pursuer had gone out. Before the men lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us. And all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites where you were beyond the Jordan to see her and all whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is God in the heavens above all, above all and on the earth beneath. Verse 12. Now then, please swear to me by the by the Lord, that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also would deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father, mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to me and deliver our lives from death. Verse 13. If you have your Bible, mark it down or write it down and go home and look at it again. And the man said to her, Our lives for yours, even to death. If we do not tell, if you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was built to the city of the wall, so that she lived in the wall. And she said to them, Go into the hills, or the pursuers will encounter you, and hide there three days three days until the pursuers have returned then afterward you may go your way the man said to her we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you have made us swear behold when we come into the line you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down and you shall gather into your house your father and mother your brothers and all your father's household then if anyone goes out of the out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and we shall be guiltless. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I just want to talk to us briefly on something I titled, There is Ability in Disability. And this phrase was given to me years ago and for some reason a few days ago the Holy Spirit reminded me of the same phrase again ability in disability and I began to ponder my head and for some good reason I just could not remember where and how this came about and as I began to struggle in my spirit and I said Lord but why are you bringing this to my spirit again and uh, to confirm it something happened yesterday with my youngest son and suddenly I could understand what the Holy Spirit was trying to make me understand and to get a picture 
of what our disability can create a permanent dysfunction in our lives if we are not careful and if it's not well managed. And I can understand that when we, as a people, give our dysfunction or our disability to God, God can turn it into an ability for something greater. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And the story we read here from Joshua is a good and a classical example of a dysfunction life, a life married not out of our choice. And for the benefit of this morning, I would like to stay with the historical account of the story of Rahab, though it is not mentioned that way in the Bible. But there are some historical accounts about the woman Rahab, that sometimes when we have a glimpse into the lives of some of the characters in the Bible and why God would choose to identify with people like that. You know, it gives you and me hope for the future. It gives us hope that there is hope in our situation, that there is no life seated before God this morning that is beyond redemption. There is no situation that you are in right now that God cannot bring you out of. There is no past so dirty that God, through the blood of Jesus, cannot clean up. Amen. They have this to say about Rahab. And some school of thought have this to say about the woman Rahab the prostitute. That she wasn't just any kind of prostitute. And she was a prostitute by birth. That is to say she was born and dedicated to the gods of prostitution. And the bad situation about Rahab being a shrine prostitute dedicated to the gods of the land, which I can't remember the name right now, is this. That is to say, if any man, whether he is a cripple, whether he is a leper, no matter how broken, tattered, dirty, dysfunction that man is, if that man served that same God that she's been born and dedicated to, if that man walks into that temple and pay homage to that God, then that man is entitled to, to do whatever he wants with Rahab. And she has no option. She has no right to say no. So she wasn't your everyday kind of prostitute that had a choice. She was a prostitute by the side. How many times does many people that where you find yourself is not because you choose to be there. You were born into a dysfunction family. You were born into a family filled with drug addiction and, and, and alcoholism. You were born into a family that was so broken and dysfunction that you, that is all you know. So all Rahab knew growing up was this is who she was. This was identity. But I believe that something inside of her kept crying out that this is not who life is not supposed to be this way. But she does not know and she didn't know how to get out of that. What a miserable way to live. That you can find yourself in situations in life that you have no physical, mental power to rescue yourself. This was the story of your sister, my sister Rahab. And sometimes before we judge people, before we pass judgment on people's situation, we must try sometimes to see where they are coming from. Why is this woman the way she is? Why is this man the way he is? Maybe because nobody desires to be bad. And Rahab did not have a choice in this matter. Because she was born because of her lineage. Automatically, she was meant to be a prostitute. She was stigmatized from birth. How many times you look at people that the family stigma, even though they are not part of the same equation, that because they were born into that family, they still address them by the family stigma. They treat you like your sister, even though you are not like your sister. 
Amen. They, they relate to you based on what your father did 20 years ago, even though you had nothing to do with it. And so you have people who have been born into this dysfunction situation that they have little or no power to bring themselves out of. But the good news about this is that there is always hope. And so it was no accident that the two spies sent by Joshua went to her house. Because God can see you. God sees you from afar off. No matter how dirty, no matter how deep in sin you are today, the eyes of God is still searching for you. Why didn't they go to an inn? Why didn't they go to the house? Because when Moses was born in Egypt, even though the daughter or the sister of Pharaoh knew and saw, when she saw Moses, she said, this is one of the Egyptians' children. Right? And she took him into her house, knowing fully well that this was one of the kids that my father is looking for to kill. And so, it is nothing to God to have sent the spies to the house of the king of Jericho. God could have done that. But he chose to go to the house of Rahab. Because God identifies with the disabled. He identifies with those who had dysfunction. He identifies with those in the gutter of life to bring hope. To you and to me. He comes to show us that in our disability, there can still be an ability to do great things for the Lord. You and I know that Rahab, in the genealogy of Jesus, she was mentioned there. In the, in the hall of faith, the great lineup of the men and the women of faith in the Bible. In Hebrew chapter 11, Rahab appeared there. A prostitute, a shrine prostitute, a good for nothing prostitute, like you and I will call. How bad is your situation this morning? How deep? with the depth of your sin and your dysfunction this morning. That is making you feel hopeless and say, there is no hope for me. If God can reach to that kind of prostitute, then He can reach out to you if you allow Him. And He can turn your disability into an ability for something great, for His glory. Ability is the competence in doing something, or the power or skill to do something that you are not able to do on your own. And disability, on the other hand, is the condition of being unable to do things the normal way. Unable to do things the normal way. You want to live a normal life, but you can't. You want to stop drinking, you can't help yourself. You know this thing is killing me, but you can't stop it. You want to stop living an unfaithful wife. You want to just stay committed to your husband. You want to stay committed to your wife, but something inside of you makes you so powerless. And now you're at the point of giving up that disability, that dysfunction. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, He said, We are afflicted on in every way, but not crushed. And God, the reason why you and I are still alive, in spite of our dysfunction, in spite of your disability and my disability is because God has not given up on you and me yet. Men may have given up on you. Your family may have given up on you. Your husband may have given up on you. Your wife may have given up on you. Your parents may have given up on you. But God has not given up on you yet. That's why you're still alive. That is why there is hope for you. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 6, He said, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. As long as you are alive, there is hope for a change. Job speaking to us in Job chapter 14 verse 14, 
He said, all the days of my appointment will I wait until my change comes. Because change is possible with God in it. And so he said, we are, we are paperless, we are bruised and battered, but we are not crushed. We are driven to despair, but we are still standing. And so you may be broken this morning, but you are not crushed yet. You may be down, but you are not out yet. So don't count yourself out yet. Don't count your marriage out yet. Don't count that son of yours out yet. Don't count that daughter out yet. Don't give up on that situation yet. This is the story of Rahab. That it is never too late. If a woman, with all respect to her this morning, Sister Melody, at 61 or 62, 64, right? And so, so at the age of 60, I want to believe if my calculation is right, she decided to start learning to play the drums. That means it's never too late. And that is to say to you this morning, prophetically by the Spirit of God, that that same Spirit, that same grace that empowers you to learn that at that age, is still available for you to accomplish every other thing that you've been believing God for, that is not too late yet. It is never too late to give up, to, to, to believe God for a miracle. We saw here live two weeks ago, a 48 years old woman, medically impossible. At the age of 48, she conceived and gave birth to a baby. Now, it's not something you read in the newspaper or, in, or saw in a movie. You saw her stood here two weeks ago live. It's never too late. No matter how broken, bruised, and battered you are, just remember, remember this child of God, that in the spite of your dark, darkest or darkest night, or dark situation, you are meant to be a light to shine. Jesus said, let your light so shine. You are made to shine. And I know nothing disfigures a man's destiny. Whether you're a man or woman or a child this morning, nothing disfigures a destiny like a bad past. That dirty past like Rahab that the enemy uses to, to intimidate you. Your family history. Your generational curse. Nothing disfigures the destiny like the past. The past failure. The past mistake. The past disappointment. The abuses of yesterday. The neglect of yesteryears. That rises up every now and again when you want to stand up. And so I looked at my son, look what happened to him yesterday. And he was playing in the park. And because of where I'm coming from, if you want to see the other side of me, is try to be a bully around me. I just, something inside of me, rise up. Something from yesterday. Anytime I am around people that put other people down, that try to bully or intimidate people for whatever reason, whether because of what they are and their social, whatever it is, any form of oppression, just bring something to me because of where I was coming from. Because I lived under the shadow of abuse and bully. Like a friend once said, it's a miracle that you are a walking miracle. That you can stand and function with love and compassion 
towards your wife, your children, and people around you, and to pastor people with so much compassion? It can only be God. Because as broken as I was growing up, as battered and bruised as I was mentally and physically by my late father, I am a man that should be able to say, my daddy did that to me, so I'm doing it to you. I should be able to say, this is the way I was brought up. This is what I know. That God, by His mercy, has turned my disability into an ability for His glory. Because no matter how disfigured your life is, child of God, I could understand why Yesterday, as I think about everything around me, and as I was sharing some of my past, you know, it doesn't grieve me anymore, but when I see, when I see my children try, if anyone try to subject them remotely, directly, or indirectly to any form of, you know, something, because I don't want that. I do what I did for children, I'm doing for children because of that. To help one child, if I can help one, to escape that in life. So I don't want that around me. But no matter how disfigured your life is this morning, there is a man, they call him the carpenter from Nazareth. I could not understand why. Jesus had to be a carpenter. Because, only, because there, you know, he learned literally how to put broken woods together. As a demonstration of your broken, my broken and battered life. That if you no matter how disfigured you are this morning, he can configure you back together. Because to disfigure simply means to spoil or to damage the appearance of something. And what the enemy is trying to do to you through your past is to spoil your appearance. And that is why when you walk around, you feel dirty as a woman. Because when you think of the abuse, if your own father can do that to you, if your brother can do that to you, if your husband can treat you that way, that means you are worse than a trash. They disfigure you mentally and emotionally. And so you cannot stand straight anymore. They bully you into submission to the point whereby you lose your identity. Wicked word. A strong man can no longer speak like a man. A beautiful woman begins to look at herself like a trash because she has so been beaten down by the words of her husband or her father at home. They disfigure your appearance. You are all dressed up, looking pretty with all the gold and the diamond, yet you feel so worthless inside. And you settle for anything because you have been disfigured. Your appearance has been disfigured. But to configure with Jesus of Nazareth, the cup in the dust, is to arrange and to prepare something so that it can be used again. And this is what Jesus came to do. To rearrange every disfigured life. To configure you so that you can be used again. Rahab was disfigured by generational cause, by historical situation, whatever it was that led to her life being that way. Nobody wanted to use a woman called Rahab. Nobody wants to marry a woman called Rahab. But when Jesus came into her home in the person of those two spies, when the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob opened that same woman was put back together so that she could be used again. And she was used again. Listen to me, it doesn't matter what you have been through, where you are coming from, you still can be used of God. Don't let anyone talk down on you. 
because of your circumstances, because of your disability, because of your past. Don't let the enemy use your past against you. Because God does not use my past against me. God used my past for me. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. That is to say every junk, every mistake, all the misstep, all the wrongs that I have done in the past, when I give it to God, God does not throw it away. He misses it together. He configures it. And say, so your past now become a testimony. Listen to me. Your value is not dependent or based on your circumstances. It is based on that hidden ability within you. That God has something inside of you. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that you and I are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Listen to me. We may not look alike. We may not talk the same way. We may not dress the same way. We may not live in the same part of town. We may not drive the same kind of vehicle. We may not earn the same thing. We may not occupy the same position. We may not carry the same title. But before God, we are all wonderful prince and princesses. We are of the same value. Those of us and those of those, not including me because I wasn't. For those who were born again from their mother's womb, I'm yet to see why. Amen. Amen. The ones who have never sinned before. And those who have sinned all their life. When we come before the foot of the cross, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Before God. I have here, as we pray, two $20 bills, one on my left and one on my right. Can you see that? This is a Canadian money, right? It's $20. It's worth something, right? Now, this one here, that is in my left hand, right? It's crumbled, right? I'm squeezing it. Trash in it. Right? It's trash. This is scripts. Right? Now, if I take this two $20 bill, this one that is all crumbled, and this one that is all crispy and looking clean and neat, if I go now to the store and I want to buy, maybe go to McDonald's now, and I want food for 20 bucks. So I go to the store, Super A, and I want to buy something for 20 bucks. Or I go to the gas station and I buy gas for $20. Now, if you go and present this at the counter and I go with this, they are of the same equal value. Right? The value, the fact that this one is crumbled Dirty and tattered does not diminish its value. It is still what? $20 bill. It is what, what this one is what anywhere in the world. Nobody rejects a dollar bill because it's dirty. No matter how broken and battered you are, child of God, God does not reject you. The story of Rahab comes to remind you and me that there's ability in this ability. How disabled are you? How dysfunction is your past? How dirty has your yesterday been? People may have treated you like this. And they try to compare you to this. But what they don't know that when it comes to the value of exchange, this and this, are of equal value. Nothing changes. 
the one with a clean past and the one with a dirty past. When we come to the place, the altar of exchange, our value does not diminish before God because we have been we have handled. Then why do you allow men to devalue you? Why do you devalue yourself because of your past? Why do you devalue yourself because of what you've been through? Why do you allow people to treat you? Because God, to Him, we are all. And Rahab came to remind you and me that there is ability in disability. That all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. That if I can be willing enough to embrace that wonderful gospel mercy, Rahab said to the two spies, and this is the good news of the kingdom. We have heard of your God, that He is the mighty God, that He is the only true God. So in the whole land of Jericho, it doesn't matter whether you are the king or the slave, the prostitute, the thief, the drunkard, the drug addict. It's the only one that says, we have heard of this gospel story and it's good enough for me. That is the one God is looking for. God is looking for the one that said, we've heard of your God. That he's mighty to save, he's mighty to heal. Of all in the whole land of Jericho, only Rahab believed the report of the Lord. And that was what saved her. It wasn't because he was anybody special or unique. And the Bible said, whosoever shall come to me, I will know why it's cast away. God is not looking for a perfect man, he's looking for men to perfect. Jesus loves you. But he's not going to force himself for you. But he said, Behold, I stand on the door and knock. If any man will come to me, he said, I will come with him. Rahab, as you read Matthew chapter 1 verse 5, this crumble dollar bill and all the other straight dollar bill, they all line up equally. Shall we all stand up this morning? Matthew chapter 1 verse 5 As we we'll pray this morning If you are here, I don't know who you are I don't know how broken Simon fathered Boaz by Rahab They was recounting the genealogy of Jesus The one that you and I why did the carpenter of Nazareth choose to come through this woman to tell you nobody, nobody is a castaway. We are all castaways by choice, not by God. And he said, the dollar bills are there, the clean, and suddenly, in between the clean dollar bill note, this broken and tattered one just slipped in. And nobody noticed the difference. Because they were all of equal value to God. This morning, I don't know who you are. The two spies, they've done their part and gone. But the Holy Spirit is still going around, bringing the good news of the kingdom of Christ. And I know how broken your life is this morning. And you say, Lord, there is no hope for me anymore. But I have good news for you. If Rahab can be rescued and can be configured and be used again by the Lord, you can. All it takes is to acknowledge Him and say, Lord Jesus, I can't do it on my own. Help me. And what I'm saying this morning as we just close our eyes and our head bow. If you are here this morning and you have never invited the Lord Jesus into your life, into your heart as your Lord and Savior. The journey 
of change starts from there. If, you, if you've not given your heart to Jesus and you say, Lord, I want to experience what Rahab experienced. I want that change. My life is so disfigured and dysfunctional that I don't know, I can, I, I've tried everything, I don't know how, but Jesus, will you use a man like me? Will you see, be willing to use a woman like me? And I believe Jesus is saying, I came because of you. I've been waiting for you all this while. And this morning, if you are that kind of person, I just, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, or if you have fallen through the crack, and you want to restore that relationship back, because of your past, you've given up on God and the enemy has lied to you that God cannot rescue you. There is no hope for you in that situation. This morning, God is saying to you, my child, my daughter, my son, there is hope. Job said there is hope even for the tree when it's cut down. Rahab was cut down by tradition, cut down by circumstances, but at the scent of water, which is the living word of testimony, things began to board in her life again. I want you to pray after me if you want to give your heart to Jesus. Just say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner this morning. I ask that you forgive me my sin. And just receive me this morning like you received Rahab. Save me, Lord. I surrender my life to you. I want to start a new journey with you. I confess you by faith as my Lord and my Savior today. Thank you, Lord. I believe by faith that I'm a new creature. All my old things have passed away. I'm a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. And I pray with you. Father Lord, I just pray for this congregation. I pray for every broken life. I pray for every hopeless life. I pray for any man and a woman in despair this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will help them to see that you value them like you value the big pastors and bishops. That before you, Father God, whether we are bishops or pope, whether we have a big church or a small congregation, whether we are married or single, whether we have children or not, before you, Lord, we have equal value and can be used by you. Anyone, oh God, that is feeling devalued because of where they are, because of what they are going through, Father God, I pray, Lord, that you add value to their lives this morning as you reveal your goodness to them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the favor of the Lord rest upon you this morning. As you go, go with God. May the Lord's faithfulness rest and abide with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Esther, give me that back. Yaku, finally before we go this morning, I know, uh, Yaku, you are part of us. And you, are, you graduated... You know, we thought ATM was the only one that graduated, but you came back to graduate. That means you're part of this congregation, you're part of this family. And on behalf of your church family, and I keep saying it, get a job and come back to Grand Cash. Amen. <laughs> and so we present this to you as you graduate, and uh, may your future be filled with faithfulness and mercy. Father, we just bless this man. We ask, O God, that his path will be bright in the name of Jesus. We ask, O God, that favor will follow him from this day forward. As your days are, so shall your strength be. We pray, Lord, that your parents' failure will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Where your parents cried, you will laugh in the name of Jesus. Where they fail, we decree that you will succeed in the name of Jesus. May the path before you be bright. May the favor of the Lord go before you. As you enter into the, another level of your life, 
May it be easier than the past in the name of Jesus. May your past not ensnare you. May your past not slow you down. Rather, we decree that your past will become a stepping stone for a greater height in the name of Jesus. Father, I will thank you. And I decree this morning, as we step out of this place, I decree for everyone here, your past will no longer be a hindrance. Your past will become a stepping stone to a greater height in the name of Jesus. You will do great things for the Lord. It is not too late yet. Go with God. God bless you and have a wonderful afternoon. Amen.